Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I am opening up a burl like a book, cutting it into a circle, and power carving a custom base I made from firewood. Stay tuned. This whole project is kind of centered around this big chunk of Oregon black walnut that I've had for quite a while, and I have a few of these pieces left over, and I wasn't really sure what to do with them. This is about 4 inches thick, 18 inches by maybe 24 inches, and I had the idea of taking a regular book match and doing it one more time. So essentially doing a four way book match. And if you aren't sure what a book match is, you will see here in a couple of minutes what I'm talking about. The bandsaw may look intimidating to some of you. My wife kind of freaks out when she sees how close my fingers get to it, but it's probably the safest tool for breaking down big, thick stock like this. So I needed to get it into a relatively square, small enough size that I could do the resaw. And the resaw is basically when I cut it into thin strips on my bandsaw. So first and foremost, I need to get some straight edges on it. And that's what I'm doing here after the bandsaw, took it over the jointer and making sure I have one very straight edge. From here onto the planer to make sure that I have a nice flat face that can ride against that bandsaw fence. This planer is 20 inches wide and it seems like it's either just barely not enough planer or way too much, meaning I'm either planing something that's three inches wide or need to plane something that's 22 inches wide. So it's nice for once to be able to utilize the full width of the 20 inch planer. You can see there that this burl has some really neat color, really cool grain. So I think it's gonna be a pretty cool table in the end. Believe it or not, I'm actually not making this as big as possible, which is why I'm cutting off so much right there. I made the mistake of asking my wife how big of a table she wanted. So we are finishing with about a 20 inch diameter table and that is why I cut it down to the size that it is at currently. If you haven't heard the term resaw before, that is what I'm doing. I'm cutting these four seven eighth inch wide strips and if my math is right, I will end up with four panels all roughly the same size. You heard me mention the word book match earlier, and that is what this is, is because when you open these panels up, they open like a book and form a mirror image of each other. And you can do this with any piece of wood, but it is especially cool with these book match pieces. And you can see there's some variations that I had to play around with to find my favorite version for this particular round table. I'm gonna be joining up these boards with my domino and I'm not gonna be using the full width of this board so you'll notice my dominoes are only in the first few inches of this board and you'll see what I mean here in just a second. If you're curious what this weird device is, it's actually a vacuum clamp. It holds the boards with vacuum power and I call it my favorite tool that I don't need. It's really expensive but it is really cool and it makes my life really, really easy. One of the staples of any woodworker is a ton of clamps and these are called parallel clamps. And if you're curious about these or anything else you see in the video, like that little glue bot there, which by the way is awesome, I will include links to everything in the video description below. And you should know those are affiliate links, which just means I get a small percentage of all the sales that go through. And it's not a ton of money, but at the end of the month, sometimes it can really add up. So if you wanna show a little support from me and not have to spend any extra money, I really do appreciate it if you click through those Amazon links. After I had the top and bottom pieces glued up, I needed a couple straight edges so I could glue those two panels together. So made a couple rips on the table saw, added some more wood glue, added some more dominoes, made sure all the grains lined up the best I possibly could, and then just added a few more parallel clamps and everything came together really, really nicely. One of the things you need to be conscious of when you're working with burl wood is the grain doesn't run just north-south. It kind of runs in every possible direction. So you need to be really conscious of the possibility of tear out if you were to run it through a planer. So I'm using just my drum sander here and you can see it's wider than that 19 inches, but it's an open-ended drum sander so I can flip it around, get the other side and get it completely flat that way. From here, I just needed to get it small enough to run on my circle jig on my bandsaw. And that's why I'm drilling a tiny little hole there because I have the cutoff end to a 16 penny nail right there that I'm just gonna set in that hole. It took me a little pushing to get it in there, put that on the center of my board. And now it's gonna rotate in a perfect circle on that nail head. And it's really a simple jig that works perfectly well. You just set the nail head in the hole and it will give you a perfect circle every single time. For me, this was a really anticlimactic point because I went through all this work and then I actually realized that this is a pretty small piece. I think it was only 18 inches, not 20 inches, and it definitely isn't very thick. So I'm hoping that at the end of the day, it's the little things that make the difference and really make this piece stand out because I could have just started with an 18 inch wide board, cut a circle in five minutes instead of doing this couple days of work to get to this kind of unique, but not sure that it was worth it four way book match. 
I'll kind of rush through the finish here because a few weeks ago I did a step-by-step -step video as well as a step-by-step -step blog on how to get a perfect finish on this nine-foot dining table that I was building. So by comparison, this table is going to be a breeze to finish compared to that nine-foot table. So if you have any questions on the finishing, I will include links to both of those in the video description below. I am happy to share the finish I'm using though. The finish is Rubio Monaco. I don't really keep any secrets on any tips or tricks that I have. Everything is pretty much an open book. The one big difference that I did is Rubio Monaco is a one coat finish, but I wanted a little bit more sheen. And in my finishing blog and video, I worked directly with Rubio to find out the best way to add a second coat because the main thing I wanted was a little bit more sheen, but I wanted to get all of that great protection that Rubio normally gives. So there are some extra steps you need to do to add a second coat, or you can kind of get some weird results if you try to just add a second coat directly on there. So check out that finishing blog and video if you want to add two coats of Rubio to your table. At this point, I was actually getting pretty excited about how this top was shaping up. So I wanted to do a really cool base on it. And a couple months ago, I did an end table with a copper pipe base that I thought ended up looking really pretty stupid. So I didn't want to make the same mistake this time. This here is the Gobi Walnut Burn Bin and all this wood was set to be burned. So I was able to rescue a few of these boards to give them a second chance at life on this table base. Pretty much the worst thing you can do to any blade is run dirt through it, whether it's a chainsaw blade, planer blade, table saw blade, you want it to be as clean as possible. It's weird that dirt is worse than super hard wood, but it is. So cleaned everything up with that wire brush, brought them in so I could run everything through my planer here. If you are a regular to my channel, you know that I am super good at responding to essentially every single question or comment that you guys leave below, even the troll comments. And if you stick around till the very end of the video, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. And if you are new to my channel, first off, welcome. I appreciate you tuning in. Just don't be afraid to ask a question or a comment, or maybe you have a personal project that you have a quick question on. I am happy to give my input on that. I will read it, I will respond. The only thing I ask is if you get something from this video, if you enjoy it, just hit that little subscribe button up in the corner, that little bell, that enables me to keep creating more content like this every week. And if you have a project you're working on that is maybe a little too complicated for a quick YouTube comment, I actually started offering consultations on my website where I'll meet with you personally via Skype for a 30 minute consultation and we can go over whatever you want, whether it's a epoxy table you're working on or how to drum up some more business or really anything you want to talk about for 30 minutes, I'm happy to chat with you on these consultations. So I'll include links to that in the video description below as well. Back to the actual build here, you see that I am adding dowels and this is because I was really tempted to just stack up all these blocks and hope that the clamps kept them in place, but I knew with that slippery glue they would slide off and I would have a nightmare clamping it. So I kind of offset each one of these dowels so I could kind of snake this up in a kind of a serpentine fashion and those dowels are going to keep everything kind of north-south, all that clamping pressure will go from the top to the bottom and nothing will slip out the side. I did almost the entire stack in one piece, which was probably a little bit tight on time because it took me so long to drill all those dowel holes and get everything together. But in the end, it worked out okay. These are the only two pieces I didn't do with that main stack. So glued these up separately, set them in clamps for about 12 hours, then pulled them apart, brought both pieces together and clamped those for probably another 12 to maybe 16 hours. I'm using those parallel clamps again for the long piece, but the short ones, I use these Shop Fox deep throw clamps and they are a really good value. They may not be the ultimate clamp. If you have a clamp that you really, really love and are definitely sold on, let me know in the comments below because I am always hunting for that next best tool. And a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I found a new light stick, a thing for inspecting my finishes from one of my viewers, Mike. And so I am not above getting tips from you guys on the best tools or product to use. I do need to give a disclaimer here is I was inspired for this particular table base by DL Woodworking, saw him on Instagram. Really, really cool, much cooler bases than this one ends up being in the end, much more intricate. I reached out to him, he was really gracious. I asked him if he invented this technique or if he got it from somewhere else. And he said that Wendell Castle is kind of a famous uh, architect or designer that kind of pioneered this. So I got it from DL Woodworking. He says he got it from Wendell Castle and a lot of people have done this. So. Apparently he didn't invent it, I certainly didn't invent it, and who knows if Wendell Castle invented it, but either way, we are all inspired by somebody. 
This is a extreme cut saw wheel and it is basically just tungsten little teeth on an angle grinder. So you need to be really, really careful when you're using this. I used gloves in a couple points just when that blade was slowing down, it touched my glove and ripped a big hole in it. So it would be really, really bad to have that touch your flesh. So use this with extreme caution because that will do a ton of damage to flesh if it comes anywhere near you. Normally when I'm doing a project like this, I really have a vision in my head of exactly how I want to turn out. And this all came together really quick. I decided I wanted to do this stack laminated base and reached out to Gobi, asked him if I could rifle through his burn bin. He said yes. So in probably about 18 hours, I went there, got the wood, glued it up, the next day started carving into it. So this all happened really, really quickly. And I decided just to start carving until I liked the way it looked. And this is where we ended up after using the extreme wheel and then the regular cut saw wheel. And so far I think it was looking pretty cool. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect, but I wasn't too disappointed at this point. I was actually a little surprised I didn't have more gaps to fill since it was all kind of rushed. I didn't do necessarily the best job gluing everything up. So I only had this one gap there at the base that I mixed in some wood dust with some CA glue, hit it with the activator and this cured it in just a matter of seconds. So then I could go straight into sanding and not like filling it with epoxy where I'd have to wait till the next day. If you've never used a Rotex sander before, it's basically a cross between an angle grinder and an orbital sander, meaning it's gear driven. So when you press down on it, it will not slow down. It will not stop. Unlike an orbital sander that when you provide some pressure, you really push down and you can see it kind of slows down, stops the movement, goes the other direction. So this with 40 grit was able to move a lot of material, but just be aware when you're using that cut saw wheel, a small little mark in there can take a long time to sand out with an orbital sander like this Rotex or even worse, a regular orbital. So take a little extra special care. Don't have any deep dishes in there because they're going to take a long time to sand out. After the 40 grit on the Rotex, I moved to a 40 grit on my orbital sander. And in hindsight, I probably would have went up closer to the 100 grit with the Rotex before going over to my orbital sander. But this one just delivers such a better finish pattern than my Rotex that I wanted to switch over to it as soon as I could. And one of the bum deals though is that gap kept opening up, or I guess better phrased is I wasn't filling it properly each time. So really put a lot of trust in my vacuum clamp there, put it at 90 degrees to let a little bit of gravity do the work when filling that tiny little gap with more CA glue. Eventually I got these gaps filled and then just continued sanding all the way up to 240 grit. And this was exhausting. I probably had a good three or four hours of just straight sanding. I was completely numb by the end of it. A couple months ago, I did a video just on attaching table legs to these wood tops. And the title of it was quit screwing, telling people to stop using screws to attach table bases to their tops. So I'm going to have to eat my words a little bit here because I am using screws to attach these. And it's a little bit different because I am using these figure eight fasteners, which account for wood movement. And when I'm telling people to not use screws, I'm really just saying don't run lag bolts straight into your table tops where you don't allow for any wood movement. So it's a little bit different but yes, I'm having to eat my words because I am using screws to attach this tabletop. Anytime you're drilling into your table, whether it's for threaded inserts or screws like this, you want to make sure you have a proper size pilot hole. And I have a really good set of white side tapered drill bits for these number six screws that I'm attaching. So just be aware there is a difference in the type of pilot hole and the size of pilot hole when you're attaching these uh, figure eight fasteners. Now I got the top all the way on there and everything is looking really good. I am ready to finish this base. And you might be wondering why I'm not using Rubio and I actually went to Woodcraft to buy some more Rubio and they were sold out. I called the rep and he didn't really have a solution for me. So I had this Osmo left over and I do think the, law, the Osmo looks amazing. It just doesn't provide quite as much protection as the Rubio. So I'm banking on people not setting their drinks on the side of this table and it will do just fine. So Osmo 3043, I will add a link to this in the video description as well. I'm applying it a little bit different than I do on my tabletop since again, it's not gonna really require the protection. It's just gonna be there for looks. So I am buffing it in with a white pad and then I'm essentially wiping all of it off with these blue shop rags. Similar to the Rubio, I feel that the Osmo looks best when two coats are applied. So I buffed this first coat on, wiped it off, came back the next day, probably only 12 or 14 hours later, and then buffed in a thin second coat. And you don't need to apply quite as much on this coat since it's already been saturated with the Osmo in that first coat. You just kind of aggressively buff in another coat with this white pad, or really you could just do it with a rag, and then wipe it off just like the first coat. And it leaves a really, really nice finish that you don't have to worry about any dust nibs or hair is falling into 
do it, you wipe it off and it's essentially done at that point. When you're using the figure eight fasteners, they don't really do you any good if they can't move. So after the finish dried, I made sure that they were still loose, which a couple of them were kind of stuck from that finish hardening on there, which I probably should have taken them off to add the finish, but I didn't. So this is how we handled it. And then just screw them into your top, making sure you had the proper size pilot holes. And there you are pretty much done. The more of these videos I do, the better I get at anticipating the questions or comments you're going to have for me. And I had a real feeling some of you out there were going to say this base wasn't going to be stable enough, that if I set a drink on one side, it would topple over. So I got a bunch of cans out of the fridge, set them as far out as I could, and it was perfectly stable. So I at least have that question or comment covered, but I can't wait to hear what else you come up with. Okay, here are the finished studio shots of this table. And I really can't wait to hear in the comments what you guys think of this build. Maybe you love it, want to see me try a bigger project, maybe a big coffee table, or maybe even something like a dining table. Or maybe you think this project is best left as a one-off and don't need to waste any more time with bigger projects. So let me know in the comments what you think. Also, every week I like to give a little bit of credit to the people that make it all the way to the end of the video. So Start your comment with the next project you want to see me do. Maybe it's a shop tour. Maybe it's more burnt wood and resin. Whatever it is, let me know, and I promise I will answer all of your questions and comments first. Thanks again so much for watching, and please subscribe for more videos just like this one.